Today on the campaign trail, NBC Nightly News anchor Brian Williams interviewed John McCain and his running mate, Sarah Palin. Brian joins me now from Green, Ohio, and along with him, NBC News political director Chuck Todd's also with us. Brian, how is she doing? The vice president uh, of the nominee of the Republican Party has taken some hits. Uh, well, she has, and uh, Chuck and I have been listening to the first half of your broadcast and both feel you should be more emotional and into the topic matter, uh, Chris. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, they uh, got off uh, both aircraft today. Uh, Sarah Palin, uh, we, the, the accompanying press pool, told us when she landed here that they had uh, dipped a wing and gone down low over a cornfield carved in her likeness. So she right. was talking about that as they got off the plane. Look, you know our numbers. You've seen the uh, Fox News poll out today. We've seen the AP out today. There's no shortage of them. Our number has it at 10, with 55% of respondents saying she is not qualified to be uh, president. Our conversation, Chris, because it is so much television, and because my preference is to kind of get out of the way of it and let people see it and make their own judgments, I think we're going to serialize it on Nightly News, not only tonight, okay. but over the next several nights. One of the points I take to her is that 55% number and get her response to it. Let's take a look at the interview, a piece of the interview right now that's going to be on Nightly tonight. Governor Palin, yesterday you tied this notion of an early test to the new president with, with uh, uh, this notion of preconditions uh, right. that uh, you both have been hammering the Obama campaign on. What, first of all, what in your mind is a precondition? You have to have some diplomatic strategy going into a meeting with someone like Ahmadinejad or Kim Jong-il, one of these dictators that would seek to destroy America or her allies. It is so naive and so dangerous for a presidential candidate to just proclaim that they would be willing to sit down with a, a leader like Ahmadinejad and, and just talk about the problems, the issues that are facing them. So that, that's, that's some ill-preparedness right there. What do you get out of that, Brian? What's the news value in that? I'm, I can't decipher the meaning there. Well, I found it interesting, this tie in an interview yesterday, tying the uh, what they see uh, as this uh, lack of uh, sitting down with lack of preconditions with somehow the Biden theory of an early test of the metal of whatever the new whomever the new president is. Um, I'm not sure that we advanced the ball there, but it was uh, it was worth trying. And, and and while I was doing that, Chuck was uh, hanging out most of the day with campaign officials and I think got a pretty good real politic feel for how this thing is being seen. Well, Chris, and this is something I don't, I, and I wouldn't blame Brian for wanting to say this. There was a tenseness between, first of all, between the two. There's no chemistry. I couldn't see chemistry between John McCain and Sarah Palin. It was, I felt as if we grabbed two people and said, here, sit next to each other. We're going to conduct an interview. There wasn't, they're, they're not, uh, you know, they're not just they're not comfortable with each other uh, yet. The other thing about it is you can tell they know that they're losing. They just have, there's an intensity there. They're drained. The entire campaign staff is drained. The two candidates seem guarded. They seem on edge. Uh, it's not as if they were rude or anything. It's not as if they weren't trying to be forthcoming. It's just, they just seemed, it, it's, a, it's a negative intensity. I don't know how else to describe it. But you'll see when you, when you see the two of them together, the chemistry is not all there. You do wonder, is John McCain starting to blame her for things, blaming himself? Is she blaming him? You know, you just wonder what's going on inside their heads. Are they upset with how the other has treated them, and is that why her numbers are low? But whatever it is, it's a negative vibe that you get in that room. Well, Brian, let's, put it, let's enlarge the picture a bit. It seems like it's tricky being running mates. You, uh, you have to count on the other partner to back you up, especially if the other partner is your, your number two. Uh, is that, do you think we're seeing a similar thing in both campaigns right now with perhaps Joe Biden talking about the, uh, the threat that will face America six months into a Barack administration because he's a newcomer? That must have upset his running mate a bit. Uh, I imagine so. And Chris, you know your history. Uh, this has only been kind of a hand-in-glove relationship. A finite number of times in the modern era, you got to see up close the Carter-Mondale relationship. You saw how it worked in the campaign and saw how it worked in the West Wing. Kind of an early notion of the partnership of a vice president yeah. uh, to a president. And I think the tops of both of these tickets 
uh, are getting used to it. Uh, but on this, on the one side, on the GOP ticket, you have what has just become a colossal story, and it was all encapsulated in the seven-minute soliloquy that Colin Powell delivered on on Meet the Press. What has happened? since the naming of Sarah Palin by John McCain. Uh, so many columnists have juxtaposed it to his, his uh, expression on every poster at this rally today, Country First. Yeah, I want to ask that right, about... Was, uh, I, mean, uh, I just think that... Yeah, but Chuck, I want to Go ask ahead, you about what, what's been very successful politics, I think, and it is politics, on the Democrat side, which is to change the topic from she's a number two does she better be ready to be a number one? That Cohen Powell said that. He said, he said that very well, I think. The job of the vice president is to be ready immediately to be president. That's a, a definition which seems to have taken hold, a job description that's taken hold. Well, it has, and you just look at our polling. We have the 55%. The other thing that I think that people may have overlooked in our poll yesterday had to do with the number of people who said John McCain's age is a factor as her negatives have gone up concern over John McCain's age has gone up a little bit. Those two go together. It's as if they realize, oh, I wasn't worried about John McCain. The idea of John McCain as president didn't bother me. He always seemed very presidential. That's not it. The age, it was always sitting out there. And you do wonder, does, do, does her, does the problems that voters have with her raise that other number with McCain? We've seen some evidence of that today. But again, I just, I, I just can't, I can't emphasize enough the odd body language. I know Ob Obama and Biden don't have the, the great chemistry yet, but yes. there seems to be some chemistry. I didn't see any chemistry here. It is it, it very much feels forced, and you almost wonder, now maybe it's the intensity of the moment. They know they're down. And, and you're, you're, you have no sleep at night. You need that idea that you might win to probably keep you going, and maybe they don't feel that they can win right now, and so they're missing that intensity. But uh, that was the thing that struck me more than anything. The lack of, you almost wonder why they wanted the two of them sitting next to each other. And well, that Chris, is allow me to point out that there is a, uh, there's a news item where we're jumping ahead at least three days' coverage because, again, the conversation takes so long in evening news terms to play out. Uh, I asked Governor Palin uh, if she was going to release her medical records. She said she would. Uh, so that is uh, something of a reversal. And I must say, Chuck was there to witness this, a surprise to her campaign. It was a surprise to the campaign staff. That's the other thing. Chris, you, you do wonder, both of these candidates are on the verge of pulling a Bullworth, or at least you feel like they're on the verge of pulling a Bullworth. I think they, they're second-guessing everything. You know, they're at that moment, and, and this New York Times Magazine piece that's out there talking about the behind-the-scenes of this campaign, how they were in search of a message. We're at, this, uh, we're at a critical juncture inside this campaign for the McCain folks, and that's who's trusting who. You've got people worrying about their reputations now. Now you're wondering, do the candidates trust the staff? Does the staff trust the can? It, it is. This is a very dangerous time in a campaign that is behind. They desperately need some good news because you do wonder, is that cohesion disappearing inside, yeah. not just between the two mates that we saw today on camera, but with the entire campaign structure? Okay, it's great. Thank you very much, Brian Williams. Good luck with the interviews, and thank you, Chuck Todd. You can see Brian's interview with Governor Palin and Senator McCain tonight on NBC Nightly News.